Yeah. So we've got a fantastic guest for you today with obviously some very current news and it's the latest attack on Nigel Farage. You've got um, Zelensky calling, what did he say? He's been putified or something? <laughs> some, something silly like that. But obviously Nigel Farage said something 10 years ago, 10 years ago, that p- potentially all this going on with Ukraine and Russia, we potentially had some involvement in. You know, yeah. and we could potentially be to blame for some of it. Now, some of you may remember we had Godfrey Bloom on at the very beginning of all this because he did a fantastic video about poking the Russian bear. Yeah. And we'll always hark back to that one because it was a fantastic video. And ever since, every time we've had Godfrey on, he's been absolutely on the money with everything yeah. that's been going on. So it'd be great, to, obviously, to have Godfrey's opinion on what's going yeah, on. And, and actually, our opinions have never changed on it. No. It's never changed, you know. Um uh, and first of all, they call you conspiracy theorists, and and uh, the men in white coats are going to be coming along and you know picking you up. And then the narrative changes, and suddenly there it is. There it is. All unfolded. Absolutely. So let's not waste any more time, and let's bring on Godfrey Bloom, who's going to give us a full breakdown. Godfrey, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you, and uh, lovely to be on. And I hope it's all going well down there in the principality. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's going as good. Apart from we've got at the moment the hot thing that's going on is Labour Council has given Nazi salutes in political hustings um, and getting the full support of the Labour Party. So, you know, th- that's pretty much where we are in Wales in a nutshell, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Run by Nazis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you recently, Nigel Farage has been in the news a lot and, you know, the majority of it is very positive. Uh, but all of a sudden, you've got every man, woman and dog now having a pop at Nigel Farage for something he said 10 years ago. So you, you're obviously fully aware of um, of what's happened there. So I'd love to get your, your opinion on wh- why all this is happening now, 10 years later. Well, I think the uh, mainstream media are making a mistake. I wrote an article in 2016, it's still on my uh, for the, the blog uh, Going Postal, about the Ukraine, explaining what a corrupt shithole it was and is today. And blow me down in February, I think, no, I can't remember, I think it might have been February 2021, our favourite newspaper, The Guardian, yeah. uh, <laughs> actually ran an op-ed saying what a corrupt and ghastly shite hole it is uh, or was now yeah. of course the guardian think it's a wonderful home of democracy and uh, a shining light <laughs> all that of course is bullshit but then you do expect uh, bullshit from guardian op-eds you yeah, don't yeah. expect bullshit from daily telegraph op-eds although that's all we've been fed now for the last three years now, for any of your viewers who, who who don't know, if I may just gallop through my background a little bit, I'm a graduate in geopolitical military studies, uh, and I was a logistics officer with 4th Armoured Division in NATO for many years. So uh, that is my background. I am not uh, the golf club gin and tonic gobshite who reads the <laughs> Daily Express, all right? I actually am a professional at this, and what I'm going to tell you is a professional view. Excellent. In 2000, and take me, you could go back further, but if you go back in 2014, uh, then the uh, CIA and the American neocons were beginning to destabilize the Ukraine. That started in 2014, and that went on until uh, Zelensky was elected, and he got elected on the ticket of uh, detente with Russia and the Russian population within the Ukraine. Mm. Uh, That all then was overturned, uh, and the uh, attacks uh, from the Ukrainian uh, soldiers on the uh, Ukrainian-Russian ethnic uh, population started. Uh, And there are some of the region of 14,000 recorded casualties uh, in the eastern Donbass. Leaving, let's just park that for a moment and look at the situation in NATO. Uh, Now, 20 odd years ago, uh, when the fall of the Soviet Union came about, NATO, uh, which is really just America, let's be frank, uh, uh, America said, we will not now, there's a peace dividend, uh, we won't expand NATO, you know, uh, let's see what we can do, which of course now has all been proven to be absolute nonsense. NATO has expanded through the Baltic states, 
So Latvia, Lithuania and, Aus uh, and Estonia uh, joined NATO. Uh, Romania, Bulgaria and some of the Eastern European companies, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, so on and so forth. So we lied, NATO lied, uh, and I'm ex-NATO, and NATO used to be a very good thing when it was a defensive treaty organization. Yeah. Goodness me, yeah. I froze on that bloody inner German border for years and years as yeah. a young man, getting colder and colder and more and more pissed off. Anyway, <laughs> when the Gold War came along, I said, oh, goody gumdrops, post-war, uh, we, we'll now get a post-Cold War peace dividend, which has been squandered quite deliberately yes. by the industrial military congressional uh, complex. This is all about money, as nearly all wars are. This is about uh, sustaining a $1 trillion a year military budget in the United States. They must have a war. They must have a bogeyman. And if you add the military uh, com congressional complex and the money that goes in, they bought every congressman uh, and yes. most senators. Uh, that's the whole reason for this. Uh, and they want also to get their hands uh, on the... Uh, Russian Federation's uh, natural resources and the resources of the Ukraine, which are now heavily uh, bought by BlackRock. Mm. Uh, and this is all about companies like BlackRock, Merrill Lynch, Vanguard. It's all about big money. And the yeah. reason that none, almost none of, uh, of, 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 of anybody in the principality will actually bloody well know this is because we have been pumped full of propaganda since the very beginning. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and it was the idea that uh, the Americans would pump up the Ukrainian army to the biggest in Europe, the most well-equipped and the most highly trained, which they did, in order to collapse uh, the Russian Federation and get regime trained so BlackRock could expand along with NATO uh, right in uh, and get all the uh, minerals and wealth and oil and so on, so on and so forth uh, that the Russian Federation has. Well, that's backfired on them now, as we all know. Uh, and the Russians put in a special force. Uh, it was only a, a, a few divisions, probably 90,000 men, to actually try and bring uh, NATO and Washington to the negotiating table. That was the reason they put them in, into the eastern Don Donbass. And to mm. wave the stick a bit, to say, stop killing ethnic Russians in the eastern Donbass. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Ukrainian army, very large, and very well trained, and very well equipped, uh, was able then to push the Russian Federation armies back because Putin miscalculated on that one. He didn't realize that there's no way the West was coming to the negotiating table at all. And indeed, they're still not. Yeah. So he came back. Uh, and we've all, I bet you've got listeners who've all been there. You take a poke at the big bloke in the corner because you've had a drink and then rather wish you hadn't. <laughs> uh, so what's actually happened of course the russians have come back uh with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of men probably up to uh, a million men and a million reserves uh their economy is stronger than it's ever been and their manufacturing capability uh, is stronger than it's ever been and of course wars are won by a couple of things industrial power of course which is mm. extremely important something that we all knew from the united states uh, in the 1939-45 or actually not quite as long as that where the Americans were concerned, but we'll leave that one aside. Um, <laughs> so, so we know industrial power is extremely important. So they've come back uh, and they have pushed almost right up to the Dnieper River. Uh, and we're all now moaning about it uh, and pretending he's trying to invade Eastern Europe and uh, Ukraine is a wonderful little democracy and what a nasty bully he is. All of which, of course, is total and utter ridiculous propaganda. Uh, and in order to get the other side, of course, you'd have to listen to RT, Russia Today. Well, yep. they've stopped us listening to that in case we were actually caught by accident. Putin's speech is saying, for goodness sake, we don't need to go down this route. We ought to yep. have a negotiated peace. And all the Russian Federation are asking for, all they are asking for uh, is the same situation, neutrality, Ukraine not a member of NATO with its 1,200 yep. kilometers of border, no mm. American missiles within 800 miles of Moscow, which is what happens when Americans dig in their bases. Yeah, They're yeah. now building bases on Newcomer, Finland and Sweden. The bases are going up. Where, of course, with integrated NATO supplies uh, and weaponry, uh, of course, the new NATO members have to buy it from uh, the United States. Surprise, 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 mm. surprise. <laughs> so we've now got ourselves into a ludicrous situation 
where the Ukraine army is virtually completely beaten. The Russians are overwhelmingly in the ascendancy. Nobody will go and talk to them. They weren't invited to Switzerland for a peace con conference. Imagine a peace conference without the main belligerent. Yeah. You could only invent this. And believe me, I'm not anti-American at all. I've said this on your show before. I'm not anti-American. I've got a lot of lovely American friends. But you will have no con conception of how stupid Washington neocons are. And I've been yeah. to Washington and spoken to these people on many occasions. Brooks Brothers shirts, silk ties, articulate, clean cut with a haircut. Scrape the surface and you've got a complete and utter cretin. Uh, <laughs> and they seem to think that the, the thing that the Russian Federation is like the Soviet Union, ramshackle, crumbly and about to fall. They yeah. have now the most integrated war machine in the history, I would argue, of mankind. Uh, their satellite guided uh, artillery systems, uh, their uh, backed up artillery, armored systems, all these things. And I've had uh, a lot. I'm a bit out of date, obviously, as you will all imagine there, because I left the army many years ago. But here's the interesting thing, though. Uh, it is it is a state of the art now, the Russian Federation, uh, their army. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is something that we can't match. We're talking about conscription. We're talking about this. We've got people like Tom Tugendhat and that other idiot whose name escapes me from Bournemouth, I can't remember. Um, anyway, they're talking about uh, fighting directly with Russia. Yeah. Now, here's an interesting point I made to Sonia Poulton only a few weeks ago. Bear this in mind. We have no officers who have done an exercise above core level since 1980, 1981. Mm. I was one of those officers. I was a young captain. Might I yeah. suggest a dashing young captain? <laughs> uh, and we only have core training. We now we won't have a senior officer who's ever been on anything bigger than a divisional exercise. Yeah, mm. we could put probably two brigades fully logistically supported in the field uh, and, and integrally supported. Two brigades, all right. Well, there are three brigades to. If you say there are three brigades on average to one division, and the Russians have something like two hundred divisions. Now, I used to do a little bit of boxing years ago in the army. I don't fancy taking on Mike Tyson. And that's yeah. what we're talking about. Yeah. It's yeah. ludicrous. We wouldn't last two bloody minutes. And the yeah. state-of-the-art drone warfare system and so on, we haven't even scratched the surface. Mm. So we can't fight them directly. We don't have a thing. We don't have the integration. Neither do the Americans. The Americans are an air and sea power, uh, not a land power. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, now... All the British army isn't much better than the American army. They're all mincing about with rainbow colours. Yeah, not real yeah. soldiers. That's <laughs> bullshit. They wouldn't last five minutes. When the suddenly a Russian infantryman comes up with a with a rifle and a bayonet yeah. on it and a half-eaten baby in his left hand, they're going to shoot themselves. <laughs> so let's stop about this fighting the Russians directly because it's simply not going to happen. We yeah. can't do it. We need to get round a table, and of course, I'll go back to Liz Truss when she was foreign secretary. When she was foreign secretary, uh, she went over to see Putin, and Putin, when she came home, made, his public statement was, is she just wasn't listening. Mm. She just wasn't listening. Now, we had a pay peace agreement uh, in, in uh, April 2022, signed, sealed, and delivered, Boris Johnson flew out there immediately to tear it up. Yeah. That was about 300,000 Ukrainian lives ago. Yes. Uh, and if you go back and find out what people have said over the years, NATO people have talked about, including Boris Johnson, uh, that pushing NATO up to the border uh, of Russia or trying to push the NATO alliance up to the border uh, is a bad thing and could lead to war. These are the only things that British politicians and senior generals, and I know because I used to be part of it, uh, yeah. have said. Mm. All Nigel has done is said, we brought this on ourselves by going continuing and poking the bear. A statement of the blindingly bloody obvious to everybody. Yeah. Now, this yeah. is where I think everybody's made a mistake in mainstream media. 
and I, it's it's only a sort of a straw poll but i have i, I don't know i have probably in total about two hundred thousand uh subscribers in one form or another yeah everybody agrees with me now i know it's probably an echo chamber but most people now are beginning to say what's this all about it's been yeah. going on for years and we can't see the point of it what the bloody hell's it all about you're <laughs> not you're under danger from any russian soldiers you are under danger from a crime wave from people who come into dover on little boats yes not russian you're not under threat from any russian uh, your wives and children are not under threat from russians they're under threat from people who are here illegally yeah. and that's shown that's shown in the prosecution and conviction rates that which are going on as we as we speak yeah so what we need to do is get around the table and back off from this stupid situation uh, of pumping money into the ukraine uh, uh and even sunak and his uh, manifesto this time round was saying two and a half but another two and a half yeah. billion into the ukraine how many villas by the bloody Lake Como does Zelensky need? <laughs> He's got yeah. his mother, his sister, his cousin, not. They're all on the ticket. Uh, every congressional now uh, member now has a big house in DC, and I've seen them at the swimming pools and all the bits of pieces. Yeah. There. They don't do that in the congressional salary, believe me. So everybody's <laughs> on the take. Uh, yeah. And so we've had to put up with this bullshit. Now, here's an interesting point for you to ponder. Here's an interesting point for you to ponder. Um, Farage and Trump are good mates. They're good yeah. mates. I think he wouldn't be taking this view publicly, Farage, if he didn't get a little bit of a nod from Trump. And yeah. I think it could come in November that Trump says, this stupid war's got on long enough, I want out. And yeah. given there's no major concession here, all they want is the same status as Austria has which isn't that far away from Ukraine, of yeah. neutrality. And let yeah. everybody get on and do business and, and so on and so forth. We can't go on like this. And with British um, with British guidance systems and British weapons and American weapons, dumping on women and children on the bloody beach in, 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 in uh, the Crimea, sooner or later, Putin's going to actually get a bit of a monk on, isn't he? Yeah, uh, and so I would suggest uh, that what he might do, and if he wants any advice from me, uh, which he probably doesn't, um, uh, given that Cameron's view that that's perfectly okay, Lord Cameron thinks that kind of behaviour is perfectly okay. Yeah, he dumps a big one on Chipping Camden, and let's see how that one goes on. Mm. Yeah. So, so, uh, um, but Grant Chaps, I think, w w is that the chap that you were thinking of? I try not to think of Grant Chaps. <laughs> yeah, he, he's the one that's, that, that, that is actually saying, oh, within the next five years, we're going to be at war with Russia. Uh, and you think, where are these, how, who's putting these thoughts yeah. into British politicians' heads? We could not fight Russia, not, not at the, uh, at the, in the, uh, the state of the armed forces that we've got. We can't even, we can't even man the, uh, the, na uh, the ships with the Royal Navy. The, 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 there's, there's the, some of them are mothballed. Well, here's the extraordinary thing. Uh, the Kaiser, with uh, all the power at his elbow in 1914, couldn't invade us. Neither could Napoleon before him. Neither could Philip of Spain. Neither could uh, uh, Hitler invade us. But our navy is now so hopeless, we're being invaded in, in small boats. Yeah. But of course, Napoleon and Hitler learned the hard way fighting Russia. And mm. I think, again, I might have said this on your program before, but it bears repeating. In 1946, when Field Marshal Montgomery was giving a lecture to the Staff College at Camberley, one of the officers said, can you give us one tip, one simple tip before you go, Field Marshal, um, uh, as something for us to take away? And he immediately responded, yes, never march on Moscow. Mm. It's and true. the thought that we could march on Moscow is ludicrous in yeah. five years, ten years, or ever, or ever. So the trouble is with Grant Shapps and all his pigeon-tested little mates uh, <laughs> who wouldn't get into the army, even the modern army who just minces about these days. But, I mean, <laughs> he wouldn't get in. Most of our politicians are just 
you know, they were bullied at school, I can tell. You can look at him, yeah. can't you? But he was bullied at school. <laughs> yeah, or was he the milk yeah, monitor? Yeah. He's gone into politics because he was the milk monitor. He couldn't yeah. get in the soccer team or the rugby team, could he? Because he's a he's brat. A yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so he's now talking big, you know, uh, but there's nothing that can be done. There's nothing that can be done. I don't want a war. But Russia strategically, and I speak here as a professional, Russia is not a strategic enemy of this country. It no, was no. a political enemy under the Soviet Union. It was yes. hostile politically. But of course, it was our strategic ally in 1914 and 1941. Yeah. Uh, so it isn't a natural, a natural enemy. Now, come on, boys. Mm. Who is our natural enemy? The bloody French, isn't it? <laughs> the French. <laughs> not Russia. <laughs> So the, these guys don't know anything about geopolitical strategy. They don't know about um, army, integrated warfare. They don't know anything at all. But yeah. it doesn't really matter, does it? Because they won't be here on the 6th of July. Well, yeah. And, and that's and that's a big part of it, I think, because, you know, I, I there's a couple of things. I, I always wonder, where's the receipts for where this cash went? You know, where, what has this money gone on? Because it doesn't seem to have gone on anything to actually assist the Ukrainians in the war. It seems to have gone on, you know, well, vanity for Zelensky and, you know, marching powder. But the, the other thing then is these politicians, who are they? You know, like, who are these people who are saying, oh, yeah, this is this is what we need to do? They're not experienced. You know, they, they just sit in the, the, you know, the House of Commons and have a little chat and then go into meeting rooms and have a little chat. And then they come out as if they're the experts. But any expert on this matter that I've seen speaking is saying exactly the same as yourself. Even Boris Johnson said the same thing. You know, Mo Boris Johnson said that Farage is morally repugnant. He said the same thing when he was ah. London Mayor. Hello, yeah. Pop, this is cattle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, I suppose his opinion doesn't really come from much anymore, does it, no, Boris? Not at all. You know, but, but again, you know, this, this to me is the timing on all this. It, it, is it hand in hand with reform getting some positive sort of legway? in the up and coming elections is it again just a, a, a tactic to to smear nigel farage or you know do they believe what they're saying which i which i find hard to believe well i think they needed to bounce back reform there was that dreadful picture of tice in the ukraine yeah. looking like he'd actually been borrowing something snow white from zelensky himself <laughs> and um uh, looking crazed and i think that picture just was beginning to destroy reform and nigel had to take it over uh, and he had to kill that piece of lunacy uh, by uh, telling the truth and the yeah. reason that we're getting this hysteria uh, from the press is because it's true we know it's true we know we've expanded nato Angela Merkel said that the only reason we were doing a fake negotiating piece was to gain time to rearm the Ukrainian army. She said it in public. So we all know that Nigel's point of view is valid. Yeah. yeah. And of course, the trouble is mainstream media. Why don't they get on somebody who really, really knows what they're doing? And that's Colonel McGregor. I got Colonel McGregor on my channel for two interviews. Is that really beyond the BBC? Or the mm, or yes. sky shouldn't we have a chat with somebody from from another point of view um uh, and tucker carlson went out there the, the the whole thing is absolutely ludicrous but of course uh the northcliffe press in 1914 was doing the same thing mm. uh you know the germans were banding babies and all the rest of it and it was all dreadful to suck us into a war which was nothing to do with us in 1914 Serbia was not uh, a, a nation that we needed to go to war to defend. No. Uh, it wasn't in our bailiwick at all. We could have stayed out. We stayed out of the Franco-Prussian War in 1870. We could have stayed out in, uh, in 1914, but we didn't. We were sucked in by popular opinion. Mm. Uh, and this is how they do it in, a, in a, a democracy or what passes for a democracy. Now, they've got to get the man on the Clapham omnibus believing that Putin's a bad man, he's another Hitler, and it's all in a good cause. And of course, it's not just the neocons in in Washington, is it? The, let's be frank, the average man on the clap of Omnibus is a bit of a burk as well, isn't he? <laughs> so uh, he's had a few pints, you know, down at the jolly old wheat sheaf, and he's, you know, he's winding himself up, we've got to do something about this Putin <laughs> business. Yeah. You, know. you couldn't invent it, but now here's the problem. It starts off as stupid, 
then it's funny, then it's more stupid. And the next thing you know, like 1914, 18, we had three million British Empire war dead. That went yeah. well, didn't it? That yeah. went well. We had 3,000 casualties uh, in the uh, in the Second War, which was only part two of the Great War, of course. 60,000 yeah. in London died in the Blitz. Yeah. So people and seem bankruptcy. to think, they seem to think war now is, you know, the games the teenagers play, bang, bang, for dong for dong for dong yeah, These yeah. politicians think that war is like that. It isn't. Young men get their bloody legs blown off, suffer mm. horrendous burns, uh, uh, mentally traumatised. The trouble is with politicians, it's that they don't go. It's exactly. ever thus. They send everybody else's young men while they sit safe at home. Uh, yeah. And uh, this is what we've got to understand. Yeah, well, I was having an interesting conversation last time. I was in London, I was in the Union Jack. And, and conscription is something prior to this war that I would have always been in sort of in favour of. I think that leaving school and going into, you know, a form of conscription, military learning, you know, vital things that you don't learn in school and more more so respect and discipline. I would have said that was a good idea, but I had someone in the um, Union Jack Club ask me a question and, and it was when the conscription talk was all going on. And they said, so would you not like your children conscripted? And I said, well, normally I would. But at the moment, absolutely not. No. In no way. You know, I, I would always think it's a positive thing. But the way the wars that we're getting involved in now, I wouldn't be sending my children, you know, to, to go and fight and die in, in for a foreign war. You know, I'd much rather, and her example, well, her reply was, oh, so you'd rather them sit in a home playing computer games then? And I said, well, my children don't do that anyway. But yeah, I would. <laughs> I'd much rather them sit in a home playing computer games than marching on Moscow. You know, so I, I think... The, the mood is changing, isn't it, with, with, with what's going on? And I think, like yeah. you said, people are starting to think, no, hang on, you know, I can't afford to go and buy uh, tomato sauce anymore because that's gone up to six quid. But then we can send two and a half, another two and a half billion to Ukraine for what? You know? So I think it is affecting people now. It, it absolutely is. The the But also patriotism seems to be uh, lacking as yeah. well in this country, Godfrey. You know, uh, and when you, when we do uh, celebrate uh, St George, or not so much in Wales, but but certainly the the police jump on you. You know, to, to you, you, you're putting that that hateful St George's cross up. Yeah. You know, um, but w what do you think about Turkey and and its movements towards Russia? What what wh wh where do you think the geopolitics are in that? And and should should NATO? How can I put it? Uh, um, step back slightly because of course we're going to get two secretary generals changing changing over aren't we from Stoltenberg to um Ursula von der Leyen well Turkey's a funny Turkey's a funny game um the 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 prime Erdogan there the prime minister is uh, he's a, he's he's a real geezer he's a real chancer he's mm. a sort of geopolitical Arthur Daly he'll blow with the wind at what what he thinks is going to be good for him yeah but BRICS, the european union wouldn't let turkey in and they've been stalling them where's the yeah. ne next natural home for turkey and that's BRICS. in mm. fact i would argue uh it's not just turkey where's the natural home for hungary BRICS, mm. not the european union uh wanting to destroy hungary with unlimited immigration i would argue the best place for great britain is BRICS. Yeah. Uh, uh, NATO's done for. NATO's finished. It's uh, it's an anachronism now. Mm. Uh, and getting back to conscription, I think we'd all agree that a period of conscription, if our armed forces, if it was military conscription, and it wasn't quite clear, if it was military conscription, uh, and our military was for the defence of our islands, I think we'd yeah. all probably go along with it. Yeah. But we don't. We're not mercenaries. We're not fighting other people's wars. So yeah. nobody wants their children killed uh, in the Ukraine which 90% of the people in this country couldn't point out to on a map. <laughs> and if you went to America, 120% of Americans <laughs> couldn't point it out on the map. So we don't want other people's wars. And we're always doing it, aren't we? Yeah. The Great War was somebody else's war. And to an extent, the Second War was somebody else's war. Mm. I mean, guaranteeing Poland against the Third Reich. Well, that went well, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> If it hadn't been for Hitler invading uh, invading the Soviet Union, yeah. we'd have been the boo. Uh, yeah. So yeah. 
all these things come together. But I've, I've said on my channel, and I'm not a pacifist. Uh, of course, I'm not a pacifist. I wouldn't have had my military background. I've been a pacifist. Uh, but war never works. War is always bad. Yeah. War is always bad. You hardly ever really get anything out of a war. Occasionally, you'll have to fight one. Now, yeah. when the Argentinians invaded the Falklands, that had a Union Jack flying over it. It was a British territory, and you can't let Johnny Foreigner take the piss. So we had yeah. to kick him off, and we kicked yeah. him off. Yes. But, you know, the same that was the Isle of Wight, or the Jersey, or the Channel Islands, or something like that. But if they march into uh, uh, Kiev, the Russians march into Kiev, or vice versa, who, to be brutally frank, who gives a shit? I don't yeah. care. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly wouldn't want to sacrifice any of my family for it. No, absolutely no, not. No. Absolutely, and I think that that is the you know the general con perception now of of the military. We seem to be everybody else's army. But you, you mentioned there, you know, NATO is done and dusted. But now you see in this EU army once again raising its head, where it isn't going to be. It's not going to be an EU army. However, the EU are the ones that's going to be able to direct the British Army which wars they have to get involved in, and it's, we have no say. So they they are ultimately in control, yeah. and that's the EU which we left, you know. But there's obviously talk of that coming about now. So what what do you make of that? Is that replacing NATO, or is it there as a um, well, second layer, I suppose? Well, there's a number of things in there. There's uh, the geopolitical situation, the military situation, the society, the societal implications. Mm -hmm. It takes years to make a soldier. Uh, and broadly speaking, they need to be volunteers. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the standard of education and the standard of, uh, uh, broadly speaking, education in the state system, which is the great majority, would take a lot longer to make soldiers. Uh, mm. You know, there. Uh, I used to be heading a training squadron years ago, uh, and the young men coming forward were volunteers, and they weren't bad. They weren't bad. You could turn them into soldiers, but you can't drag some of these characters off the street and make them soldiers, and yet you're going to flog a few. The Duke of Wellington could have made them soldiers, you know, but you've got to do a bit of flogging, a yeah. bit of Phil Punishment number one. Uh, you can't get in people but to ask nicely. And when I was at crew camp as a trooper, when I went on to Sandhurst, I can tell you, I was never asked nicely to do anything. No. Nobody ever said, please, would you mind awfully? <laughs> you know, you've got a pay stick up your ass uh, yeah, and you've yeah. got on with it. They'll be writing to their bloody MP. We've got rid of um, crown exemption now. Yeah, uh, yeah. So the next thing you do, they're going to write to their MP. And by goodness me, go to right puffy left wing MPs, aren't they? Uh, in, 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 on the 6th of July. Uh, so, no, it isn't It isn't done. And I soldiered, even when NATO was, NATO was quite strong. Yeah. The uh, I was uh, in northern Germany, you know, the BAOR was in northern Germany. Uh, well, the Belgians were bloody hopeless. Uh, the Dutch had hairnets. The French never turned up. And the Americans were ganged up all the time. <laughs> Now, fortunately, we know now that the Soviet <laughs> Union wasn't much better in different ways. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But we're not going to get an EU army capable. I mean, they'd be murdered. I mean, the best army that's ever been put in the field post-war was the Ukrainian army. Yeah. You know, it was seven or 800,000 strong with the latest equipment and highly trained, which is why the Americans decided to pull the trigger and let them have a pop at the Russian Federation. That's the best we had. That was the best we had. Mm. A bit like old Henry Cooper, when you remember him meeting uh, Alain or Cassius Clay, as he was. Uh, Henry Cooper was a bloody good boxer with a bloody good left. Damn yeah, good yeah. fellow. Plus a bit too easily. But when he got up against Ali, like everybody else in the world, in world boxing, they couldn't live with him. At the moment, nobody could live. Nobody could live with the Russian Federation's integrated army. Uh, it's mm. the size. It's the equipment they've got. And, of course, then you look back behind them. Who's backing them? <clears throat> uh, who's back in their industrial military complex and uh, the Russian Federation, the Chinese. Yeah. Mm. Well, you know, it's not going to happen. <laughs> but nobody seems to want to be realistic. I mean, even the chief of the uh, imperial, or they used to call it imperial staff, chief of staff, uh, yeah. Saunders, was saying we need to sort of ratchet this up and ratchet that up and so that if we need to take on Russia directly, we can do it. This man's a professional general. 
Who took his exam for him? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but of course, you know, and I know, you can't get above Lieutenant Colonel unless you're politically correct. Yeah. Yeah. And if you happen to have a dress on instead, if you're a bloke, well, you don't have to go up the tent. Oh, that's good. Shoot yeah, up the old yeah, thing yeah. there. If you're, if you're fitting in with all of it, whether you're trans, LBGT, PDQ, got all that kind of stuff. Well, you know, look at, I'm doing an interview with an ex-fighter pilot, um, uh, I think on Friday, right. uh, who said he just got out of the Royal Air Force now, you know. So you don't right. get promoted on merit. So we don't have senior officers who are meritocrats. We have them who tick political boxes are the same yeah, with yeah. the police force, of course. As yeah. we all know, it's the same with the police. How the police, you look at your average uh, police uh, when it comes to dealing with things like stop oil and all the rest of it, or any form of demonstration, uh, which isn't LBGT, all that kind of stuff. I can't even pronounce it. Um, <laughs> you know, they're all on side with that kind of thing. Yeah. So uh, we we don't have. We don't have the wherewithal or the facility. And to train an army, you need senior NCOs. Hmm. You can't train an army without senior NCOs. They're the yeah. people. They train officers as well because they've yeah. experienced. They've got three stripes on their arm, maybe three stripes and a crown, or maybe a maybe a, a crown on their sleeve, and they know what they're doing hmm. because somebody has to know what they're doing, uh, yeah. and nobody yeah. else bloody well does. Certainly not the generals. <laughs> I mean, no. they're laughable. Just sit back and do a clip of an interview, and then we had um, we've got. Uh, Tobias Elwood, I've remembered his name, and Tom Tugendhat, talking oh, a story about Tobias. fighting the Russians. These comedians were one or two pippers, you know, yeah, troop yeah, commanders. Yeah, yeah. They haven't got a clue about anything. They, and it's all light infantry work. Maybe they did a good job in Northern Ireland or wherever they were, but they've got no soldiering, not real soldiering experience. Yeah. As I say, they have not been in a divisional or corps exercise because there haven't been any since 1981. Mm. So we haven't even trained for that. Who's going to run the army? It just doesn't make any bloody sense at all. Mm. You'll be better off rounding up mill war supporters or sending them. They might have a chance. <laughs> yeah, and and, and yeah, you're absolutely right there. You know, that is, it's a funny comment. But, you know, you see, you know, Putin, for example, now, there was a comparison not so long ago and it showed the Russian military adverts trying to encourage people to join the army. And then you had the British ones and they, and they played them one alongside each other. And the Russian one was, you know, a combat, you know, as you can imagine, you know, very masculine, very aggressive, very, you know, it, it, it motivates you. It, you. it makes you want to be a part of that, you know, because it, it means something. But then you see the UK one where it's like, you know, snowflakes, we want you. It's OK to cry in the army. You know, it's OK to pray and stuff like that. And it's got, you know, they're in the middle of these these hills in Afghanistan, maybe. Yeah. And then one guy gets down to pray while all the other Brits are standing around him gardening. And, and, and the American one's even worse. The American yeah. one who you saw a few years ago, oh, it was all yeah. about the girl who's managed to actually keep her, you know, she's a single parent mum and she loves ballet. And the, the American army gives a chance to, you know, rehearse her ballet. Yeah. And then the Chinese, the Chinese recruitment one as well, it's the same. You know, are you an evil bastard? You know, yeah. can you wield a rifle with a bayonet on the end? Uh, you know, are you super fit? And that, you know, that's what people want to do. I don't know what our yeah. characters would do. What would yeah. they do? Burst into tears. Mind you, I can tell you there yeah. was a rule when I was at Santos. When I was at Santos, um, <laughs> uh, we were told by uh, one of the instructors, he said, look, when you become an officer, uh, those of you who do, and he looked at me and said, not all of you will. I thought, oh, that's, that's nice. Uh, and he said, uh, you will sometimes really really want to burst into tears if if things have gone so wrong and you want to burst into tears for god's sake go behind a tree and do it it's up, it upsets the men <laughs> perfect and then, but, but where would it go you know like you, we live in a culture now where if you know if you're not happy about something you'll you'll say oh my mental health and then you're expected you know red carpet to, to the exit yeah. you know they're not going to be able to do that if these people were you know, they, they, they're joining the military because they've been told that, oh, we're welcoming to um, people who want to cry and, you know, people who want to pray and, and people who decide they're a female when they're a male or the other way around, whatever they do. What are they going to do in a war type situation on exercise when they are having to deal with real life war situations where your opponent, the Russian, for example, or the Chinese, they're not going to think, you know, oh, right, okay, yeah, no problem. We'll give you five minutes to have a little calm down and then we'll, re we'll, we'll carry on. 
you know, we, we, we are setting ourselves up for huge, massive, catastrophic failure yeah. from what I can see anyway. But I'm no expert, but that's just from my observations. I don't think we generation. I don't think we have the generation. I'll say just one thing, though, which I think is, is worth saying. So it's not all negative. Um, I have sponsored and been involved with rugby football for many years. Uh, and you will find, uh, which is uh, you'll find in the public schools, your officer corps is still there in small yeah. numbers. These young men, I know them quite well from all over the country, are pretty good blokes and they would yeah. shape up. But they're just not in enough numbers. There's just not enough numbers. Yeah. And you will know, especially out there in the principality, uh, you'll go and visit some of your junior rugby club sides uh, in, in, in your part of the world and you'll see plenty of young men who would make good soldiers. Yeah. But there's just not enough. There's just not yeah. enough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, 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 the one thing that got me was, remember the, the old slogan, be the best, mm -hmm. and that was the British Army slogan for adverts. And then they, they, they decided to get rid of it because it was too elitist. <laughs> too elitist, yeah. Well, did you see what they replaced it with? It was, in the Army, it's okay to fail. And when we fail, we try again. And then when we fail again, we'll try again until we get it right. And I'm thinking, this is, this is and it's like, join the Army. I was like, what? <laughs> you won't get a second opportunity in the field. You know, it's like, oh, bullet connect. I got blown up there. I gotta, like, try again. <laughs> it's just, it's, a, it's not the right messaging that you get. And it's not attracting the right people. I think, I'd like to think that if the proverbial did hit the fan, there's enough men on our streets that would take that call. Mm. You know, that aren't in the army at the moment. Like you said, the Millwall fans and, you know, football lads, yeah. for example. I think there are enough people who would make a stand but you're right there's just the numbers are just uh, i just can't it's see the, the numbers. game of numbers and there's a there's a woman uh who shot she's now lieutenant general she's a female uh and genuine female all right not <laughs> any of that meat and two veg down the bottom end but she's a real female uh, <laughs> and she's also been accelerated like mad to get because they were desperate to get a lieutenant general who's a female yeah it wasn't, yeah. It wasn't a doctor you know, yeah, <laughs> or something like that. And it was quite funny. And the last thing I just, I looked up some of her quotes. She's a real lemon. Uh, she said, uh, <laughs> what was it? Uh, yeah, the trouble with the modern army is too hierarchical. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's sort of the army, fellas, isn't it? It's a bit <laughs> hierarchical. <laughs> and you're a lieutenant general. You're the most hierarchical of the whole bloody <laughs> lot, aren't you? You <laughs> stupid cow. <laughs> <laughs> but you know you're right because it, it is you know, they, they accelerate these people um you know we see it in the police you mentioned the police we see it there we know people inside the police we speak to a lot of them and retired police officers you know a lot counting down the days to retirement because they can't wait to get out <clears throat> but it is you know the box ticking you know if if you're a you know a black lesbian who's in a wheelchair that but, I, but is born a male then you're you know you may as well join as a sergeant you know <laughs> well, and then, John, you'd have to join a lot higher than that i think they'd put you in at chief inspector <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. I've seen the caliber of chief inspectors as well, haven't yeah, we? Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I won't be surprised. But it is we're very much in the wrong person for the job situation at the moment. Um, we're we're, we're the total opposite of picking the right person, no matter what their background is. The right person, and that's the you know it's, it's a pretty fair line to take. Isn't yeah. It? Well, uh, Godfrey, the would you advocate withdrawal from NATO? Oh, yes, I've been advocating withdrawal from NATO for years. It's an anachronism. It should have gone when the Soviet Union collapsed. Mm. It became obsolete. We didn't need it. Uh, same and with the, the money, European Union. Uh, the same with the U European Army as well. Well, I wouldn't have to do with any Johnny Foreigner. What's the point of it? If you look at our history, the only time we get in the poo is when we line up with Johnny Foreigner. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know that it doesn't matter whether it's NATO, whether it's the Entente bloody cordial that went well, didn't it? Uh, and all these other things. Uh, <laughs> no, no, we are an island. God made us an island. We are an island race. We need a strong army, a strong navy, uh, and a strong air force to defend ourselves. Yeah, and, 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 British, and British interests, Gibraltar, Malta. Well, if it's got Malta. a Union Jack flying over it, if it's yeah. got a Union Jack flying over it, we yeah. then have to protect them. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But not, not somebody we don't even know who the bloody hell they are and care less. 
Yeah. You know, and, and of course, we'll go back to uh, the famous words of Churchill, jaw, jaw is better than war, war. Where, why has that not landed on the desks of number 10? It should be, should be etched into the desk. Money. Well, first of all, you're quite right. Enormous money and enormous political capital. And this is one of the problems with other things like global warming, which clearly isn't happening. I mean, it's ridiculous. It clearly isn't bloody happening. So he put out a lot of propaganda saying, oh, last May, the May was the hottest May that we've had in it. bloody wasn't. We're all bloody freezing. Yeah. We, had the sun out, we had the sun out here in Yorkshire yesterday for the first time. It's June the bloody 22nd or 23rd or something. <laughs> Absolute bollocks. But <laughs> it, you can't get out of this political capital. They won't turn around and say, global warming. Can we drop a bollock on that one? They won't say, oh, <laughs> safe and effective. What it was it? Dear, oh dear, we dropped one on that one, didn't we? Oh, war with Russia for regime change. Mm, it's not going well. Do you think we ought to piss off out of it? They don't do that, do they? And why? Because they're gone. They're all re re resigning. They're not standing again, are they? Because yeah. the numbers are coming out. Excess yeah. deaths are coming out. The war in the Ukraine is being lost. All these things. Well, they've made their money now. Sunak's married a billionaireess. Lucky fucker. Yeah. Uh, I mean, He's, he'll bugger off to bloody California or something with her, or back to India, where his roots are, incidentally. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so we're going to get all this bloody nonsense again. I mean, and Cameron, we thought we got rid of Cameron. How did yeah. he come back? But, yeah, I mean, not even elected. Uh, he's an, uns you know, an unsinkable turd, Godfrey. I don't. I don't the yeah. phrase that comes to my mind is shit on a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> on that note. <laughs> yeah. Godfrey, it's been brilliant. You're you're uh, you're always welcome on this program. Absolutely, uh, and um, uh, and yeah, we'll we'll look forward to your, your next venture out to us. Great, Excellent. great pleasure to be with you, and uh, good luck in Wales. Excellent. What, what I there is one thing I wanted to do very quickly, um, and is to bring up because I found that picture of Richard Tice. Uh, there he is. <laughs> so, <laughs> definitely looks like he's been spending. <laughs> Can you God be laughing? <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Thanks for coming back, Nigel. At least you don't look like a chimpanzee. <laughs> Excellent. Godfrey, thank you so much for jumping on again. And I really do look forward to speaking to you again soon. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Uh, as most of you know, my work is very heavily independently research based. Uh, and I get my information from all over the world. It would help if you press the subscribe button and the little bell next to it, because the more subscribers I have, uh, the more likely it is that international uh, independent research institutes will share their material with me. It's most helpful, and then, of course, I'll automatically share it with you. Uh, so, surprise, won't cost you anything. Uh, thank you very much.